Namaste and welcome from Dhananjay Kumar. Thank you so, so much for joining me in this journey to great minds through their words, quotations. This short video is about environment. We all know the environment. I will restate it, that your surrounding, it can be your local area, your own garden or yard, grass, trees, maybe some squirrels, land, air, in your local area, in your town, in your region, maybe lots of villages, cities, towns, roads, cars, airplanes, train, parks, all of that is that larger environment. Environment around the earth is even larger. We have glaciers, oceans, mountains, rivers, lakes, air, the environment, different layers of the environment ozone layer and so on, there are 17 layers, magnetic field and your regional and local environment being part of it. So there are two, three things to note. One, environment in your surrounding has many components, many aspects. There are other people, other animals, trees, water, air, all of that. And secondly, that each one within the environment, each entity, each unit is connected with one another. Within an environment, all the people, all life forms, all trees and forest and uh, grass, everyone is connected with one another. And not only that, each one of them can influence the environment even if in small way and a change in the environment affects each one of us. So it is an interactive process. You influence the environment, environment influences you. And as we all know by now, and since I'm much older, I know for at least 50 years that we have been talking, people have been talking about the deterioration, damage to the environment and the resulting change in climate, in global warming and its serious threat to our existence. So despite much talk and discussion and policies and negotiation and a lot of noise. I feel very little has been done. And environment is something, it's not that you take a step and environment improves. It has to be sustained, serious and significant, not small step. Big decisions, big policies, big actions need to be taken or should have been taken in the past. Instead of waiting and consoling ourselves that, you know, it may take another 100 years or 200 years for life to be extremely difficult on earth. And in 200 years, we will figure out something or our future generations will figure out something and they will develop some technologies and they will be smarter or more intelligent and they will take, they will solve the problem. In case of environment, it doesn't happen that simply. Once a trend sets in, first of all, it takes hundreds or thousands of years for a trend to set in the environment to degrade it. And then similarly, it takes a long while to improve it. And it improves only if serious drastic efforts are taken in our behavior, in our pattern, lifestyle, in our consumption, 
uh, what we consume, what we waste, what we destroy, a change in our habits, change in our mentality, most important. So with these words of caution, I would begin a few quotations on environment. The first quotation is by John Muir. When a man plants a tree, he plants himself. Now in few words, this is a very subtle and deep meaning. When a man plants a tree, he plants himself. John Muir is suggesting that because humans are so dependent on trees, and trees are dependent on humans, they are interdependent, that more trees, better quality trees growing is good for your health. And when you are healthy and in proper mind, you will not destroy the trees and therefore you are in fact benefiting yourself. By planting a tree, you are helping yourself. And you are, in a way, metaphorically, planting yourself, which means your life support system. You are planting your life support system when you plant a tree. So I heard recently a story of a child, a teenager, who lived in a place where there were no trees, it was all desert land, no food was growing, uh, it was horrible situation and his nearby areas had uh, trees. Nearby means not his neighborhood but further further away. So they had to bring water from far distance or dig wells to bring water from underground. So he decided as a child in his mind that this will be a good mission for my life to plant trees. He's still alive. I heard the story on, uh, saw actually a program on this uh, person. He is much older, much older. And he has planted about 200,000 trees during his entire youth and entire adulthood. So I salute to him and I hope there are many more people like him in the world. This is a beautiful quote by Henry David Thoreau. What is the use of a house? What is the use of a house if you haven't got a tolerable planet to put it on? What is the use of a house when you don't have a planet to put it on? A tolerable planet. Tolerable planet means a planet which can sustain human civilization. By house, he does not mean one house, your house. He means all the houses and all the shelters and all the infrastructure. What is the use if our planet cannot sustain that kind of growth, development and proliferation of the idea that nature exists for our consumption. Unfortunately, a lot of people in our world today have this notion that the world, universe, nature was created for our consumption, for our benefit. And we can use it, consume it, waste it, damage it, destroy it. It's our prerogative. We have the right to do that. I totally, totally disagree with that. And I am pretty sure that most in the younger generation growing up have the same feeling and that is a good message, it's a good news. I am still hopeful and I wish the best that the children growing up today will live in a more cleaner, life supporting and friendly environment away from these drastic weather conditions, forest fires, glacier melt, warming, sea level rising, all these things will end. 
Thank you for listening and we'll come back with another topic and great quotes on that.